my 300 Discovery. This is the 4B off-roader. And we're gonna do a bit of measuring. What I've got on the dashboard that you can see in the view of the camera is a GTEC performance meter. Now a GTEC performance meter is used by track day cars, it's used by drag racers, it's used by car enthusiasts to measure certain performance of the car. One of the features that it has is an inbuilt dynamometer and it's able to accurately depict the horsepower produced by the car. Now the way a dynamometer works is it measures the acceleration of a mass and it converts that into a horsepower figure. Now with an in-car dynamometer, which is what we have here, we need a very accurate measurement of the weight of the car. So that's what I'm doing now. I've got a couple of car batteries on board that I need to drop off at the local scrap metal place and while I'm there I'm going to put the car on the way bridge and find out exactly what this beast weighs. Now this is quite a heavy car I'd have thought. It's got a lot of armour on it, it's got the rock sliders, it's got uh, an off-road bumpers, it's got a winch on it. Um, it's not your standard discovery. And the other thing that it's got is big big tyres as well. So those are going to sap some of the torque, some of the power out of the drivetrain. And obviously being a four wheel drive as well, it's got a four wheel drive drivetrain. So again, that's going to sap a bit of the engine power. But what we're looking for today is some comparative figures. The figures that uh, the, the GTEC returns back to us might not be the same as a chassis dyno. And what I mean by a chassis dyno is the kind of dyno that you see where you have rollers embedded into the floor and the car is strapped down usually with ratchet straps and has a big fan blowing cool air into the front of the car and some dude sits in there with his laptop and blips the throttle. The principle is the same. The principle is exactly the same. What we're doing is we're using the car's engine to accelerate a mass and in turn, using mathematics, we can work out if we know how fast it accelerates the mass, what the mass is and what the time frame it accelerated it in, and the force of that acceleration, we can work out how much output power the car's got. And like I say, it's very different to, from a chassis dyno, a, uh, an in-car dyno, because there's a lot of external forces that you don't see on a dyno. For example, um, undulations in the tarmac, differences in gradients of the road, um, wind resistance is one. So we have to put all those parameters into our in-car dyno to get the most accurate figure we can. So I'm on my way now to the scrapyard and I'm going to weigh the car. Let's see what it weighs. We'll put that information into our GTEC performance meter and um, that should give us a good baseline for working out what the power of the engine is on this particular car and the way it works. Now the GTEC is a very very sensitive piece of equipment. It's been around for a long long time. The one you see on the dashboard at the moment with the camera is the 20th anniversary edition. So this is not a new technology, these boys have been at this for a while and one of the things that it does is it samples its GPS rates at 50 Hertz. Now what that means is it means that the GPS data that it receives, it processes that 50 times a second. Now if you put that into perspective with something like an iPhone running um, a TomTom -tom or running some sort of sat nav navigation system. The GPS on an iPhone is sampling GPS data once a second. So the accuracy that's built into this device on the dashboard is really quite high. And it takes a while for the GTEC to build its table, its GPS table. It takes about half an hour for it to actually soak up the satellite data, build that table and be ready for use. And that's because of its satellite GPS engine 
that's built into it. It's a very, very clever little bit of kit, and uh, it's a very expensive bit of kit as well. But we've got one in the dashboard, and we're going to run a few experiments on this particular car, and uh, let's just see what it performs. And you know, we'll do a, a measurement with the boost pin, without the boost pin, with the boost ring, and see what it's all about. So I've just got to the, the, uh, the scrapyard now. I'm gonna drive straight onto the Waybridge if I can. Uh, I'm gonna unload these batteries, which I've got for sale. And um, there we go. Unfortunately, there's somebody on the Waybridge, so I'm gonna have to wait. Right, the Waybridge is now clear, so I'm gonna drive on and get myself a wait. So we've got to this little stretch of road where I'd like to do our first dyno torque pull. The car is absolutely standard on the fuel pump. The only real influencing factors are going to be the size of the tyres, but those aren't going to change at all during this process. Um, I'd be surprised if this car, as it stands, puts out more than 80, 85 horsepower. Um, there's 179,000 miles on the clock. So there's a bit of wear. So I'm just waiting for the road to clear and you can see on screen, I've got the dyno ready to go. Um, I press this button here and it tells me hold steady 2000 rpm and touch screen when steady so i'm going to accelerate gently into second gear up to 2000 rpm and then i'm going to deck the throttle and then i'm going to back off and coast and see what results it gets so um here goes revs just hold it at 2,000 revs hold it steady and here we go 3,000 revs three and a half four thousand four two and we're on the limiter and let's see what the meter picks up 79 horsepower 144 foot-pounds of torque, 79.3 horsepower. We're running a standard tune on the engine and we're gonna do a little acceleration run around this roundabout. So we're gonna sort of do 20 to 50 mile an hour, that sort of range. So here goes, 20 mile an hour. And we're just gonna accelerate as hard as we can up to 50 mile an hour. That's 50. And now I'm going to coast. So 30 to 50 mile an hour on a standard pin with no boost ring is six and a half seconds. In this, our 20 year old Land Rover Discovery 300 TDI. So the next test I'm going to do is going to be a 0 to 60 test. And to be honest, I don't fancy its chances that much. <laughs> you know, the Land Rover Discovery is no sports car. Let's just wait for the road to be clear. And uh, here we go, let's do it. All right. As hard as we can. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 40. Now you might notice that I didn't build up the revs and drop the clutch. I don't want to destroy this old girl. Come on, 60, 60, 60. Oh, we just about made 60 in third gear. And our 0 to 60 time, according to the meter, is 17 seconds. <laughs> wow. 17 seconds, boys and girls. I'm 
sure we can beat that with a bit of tune. All right, let's pull over. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head back home and I'm gonna install a boost pin and a boost ring and see what difference that makes to the car. And what we'll do is we'll try and measure it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now change the standard pin for a boost pin. So there you go, less than four minutes and we've got a boost pin installed. So now we're going to install the boost ring and we'll see how long that takes to put in. So we're approaching the roundabout where we did our 30 to 50 test and now we've got a boost pin and a boost ring installed. We're going to do that test again. So here we go. So our 30 to 50 has now gone to 5.8 seconds. It was six and a half before. Let me just check that. 6.5 before. So we've taken one and a half seconds off our 30 to 50 time. Now that's impressive. And the reason why that's impressive is that is the range where you drive this car the most. The 30 to 50 mile an hour range is the third gear. That's the kind of place where you want your acceleration to be, where you want your torque to be. I'm happy with that. I'm on the dual carriageway. It's a 60 mile an hour road. I've got the boost ring and the boost pin installed on this car. And we're gonna do a naught to 60 run. So I'm gonna wait for the GPS on the GTEC to settle and the road to be clear. It looks like it's clear now. You know what? I'm just going to go. Right, I've pulled in to do a dynamometer run. We got a nice flat, straight bit of road. So, just need to wait for it to be clear. Let's put it into dyno mode. Got a couple of cars coming down. Let me just wait for them to pass. millions of cars coming. Right, we're getting ready 
to do a torque pull. Here it goes. RPM. Let's go. It's three, three and a half, four, onto the limiter, and coast. A hundred and two horsepower. Wow. One hundred and two horsepower. Initially, we got 79. So that is 23 more as a result of putting in a boost pin and a boost ring. And that 23 more horsepower is giving us two and a half seconds at 0 to 60. But more crucially, in the driving band of one of these cars, which is the 30 to 50 mile an hour zone, we're getting an extra one and a half seconds there or thereabouts in acceleration. So in conclusion, what takes about 20 minutes to fit to your car is gonna put about 20 horsepower on your car. And this is real life data, this is data in the real world. This is a car driving along with undulations in the tarmac, with wind resistance, rolling resistance, all of those things. But more importantly, it makes the car so much more drivable. The power where you need it, right in the mid range. I mean, these engines are flat as a pancake at the top. They don't do a massive amount off the turbo at the bottom. But in that center range there, to be able to take a, a second, almost a second and a half, off that mid-range acceleration time is phenomenal. And if you were driving around a track and you were able to shave one and a half seconds out of every single corner, you'd be doing well. You'd be doing really well. I think you need to head over to Forby. Find the performance section of our website and have a look at the boost pin and the boost ring. The results are real. They're very real. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.